Welcome to No Rares Required, episode 34, Boros Human Aggro. Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth has been out for just one week, but it seems that Mardu, specifically Rakdos, or Black-Red, Boros, or Red-White, and Orsov, or White-Black, are the early frontrunners. I've decided to mix things up a little bit and include my draft skeleton for the archetype. I've done just about 100 games, and one of the flawless trophies I got was with Boros. Click the link in the top right if you want to see how close to my theoretical draft skeleton I was able to draft. I really loved Phyrexia All Will Be One, and this archetype feels like it's directly from that set. Focus on two drops, four or five pieces of cheap interaction to remove early blockers, and seven or less cards that cost four or more. If you're still unfamiliar with the cards and the draft skeleton is overwhelming, don't worry, I'll cover each one and some alternatives individually. Also, I will include when the card is average last seen at, since in my experience, finding an open lane produces better results than drafting by win rate alone. First up, we have Rally at the Hornburg. For one and a red, you create two 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature tokens, and humans you control gain haste until end of turn. This is my top common for Boros. We just came out of March of the Machine where we had Ral's reinforcements, which worked quite well in Izzet because of Convoke synergies. We don't have Convoke payoffs in this set, but the haste card synergizing with tokens, as well as triggering two humans entering the battlefield, make this a top red common. I think the secret is out though, since these are gone around pick 5. Next up we have Errand Rider of Gondor, a 3-2 for 2 and a white that when it enters the battlefield you either loot, which is draw and then discard, or just draw if you have a legendary. The majority of uncommons, rares, and mythics are legendary creatures, as well as any creature that is your ring bearer. If you aren't sure what the ring emblem does, go check out my overview guide that covers the mechanics of the set. Just don't pay attention to what I have to say about black. <laughs> I can't always get it right, especially without early access. Errand Rider of Gondor also is a top common that is gone by pick four. Next up, we have Protector of Gondor. For three and a white, you create a 3-3 that also creates a 1-1 human toker token when it enters the battlefield. You aim to have cards that synergize with humans. For example, Rally allows you to create a 3-3 and 3-1-1s, all with haste, for six mana. You start to get the idea. This is one, um, this is gone at a more average rate for a common, around pick five or six. Escape for Onthonk is a card I'm not usually happy to play, but if you watched my gameplay video, you'll notice it works better as a finisher than improvised club in this archetype. There is a one cost combat trick in every color, but giving a creature flying is definitely worth one mana in this archetype. It also goes late around pick seven or eight, so it shouldn't be hard to pick one up. Battlescarred Goblin is a nice grizzly bear at two. You are aggro. You want eight two drops, and the fact that this deals one damage to each creature blocking it also makes it difficult for your opponent to block it effectively. This one also goes above average for a common around pick six. Smite the Deathless is one and a red to deal three damage to target creature. That creature loses indestructible and is exiled. Aggro is enabled by cheap removal, and Smite the Deathless is great cheap removal. These are usually gone by pick 3 as premium red removal. War Beast of Gogoroth I've loved as top end. For 4 and a red, you get a 5-4 that whenever it or another creature with power 4 or greater dies, you amass for 2. Essentially, a 7-6 over 2 bodies for 5 is great. And unlike some aggro decks, I've found Boros to be best with 17 lands because it has some amazing 5 drops like War Beast of Gogoroth. My last common worth a mention is Breaking of the Fellowship. It didn't make my draft skeleton, but it's a decent replacement if you aren't seeing enough Smite the Deathless or cheap interaction. You might be tempted by Improvised Club, the two-cost sacrifice a creature or an artifact deal four damage to target, um, since you'd think, hey, I have a whole bunch of 1-1s that I can use as fodder, but it doesn't do much if your board is empty, and sacrificing even a 1-1 is a higher price than I would like to pay. Now for the uncommons. Fear Fire Foes. The answer if you find yourself up against an annoying horn of Gondor. 
For X and a red, damage can't be prevented this turn. Then you deal X damage to target creature and 1 damage to each other creature with the same controller. In a pinch, you can even cast this for X equals 0 if you think that they will try to prevent damage, but Fear Fire Foes is sadly sorcery speed. Still, many of the archetypes, including this one, create a bunch of 1-1 tokens that this can help clear, while also taking out a larger target. As premium or red removal, you'll need to take this one early, and it's usually gone by pick 3. Aomir of the Rittermark is one of the amazing 5 drops that I was talking about earlier when I said you want to play 17 lands. For 4 and a red, you get a 5-4 haste that creates a 1-1 one, one, as long as you control a creature with the greatest power. In case you were wondering, it is okay to tie for 5, so your opponent would need to have a 6 power creature by turn 5. Chimney Rabble, a 3-3 haste that spawned a 1-1 for 4, was a top common in Phyrexia All Will Be One. Being able to pressure your opponent while also creating a chump blocker, if it is a race, is such a huge swing. My flawless trophy was lucky enough to have two of these. The Seeker is out though, and these are usually gone by pick 3. Theoden, King of Rohan, is the card that makes Boros care about humans entering the battlefield. For one, a red and a white, you get a 2-3 that when it or another human enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. While giving your 1-1 one, one double strike isn't impressive as um, something like Battle Scarred Goblin or the 3-1 Westfold Rider on turn 3, you get to give two things a double strike with future rallies or with uh, Protectors of Gondor. And this goes at a pretty average rate for an uncommon around pick 4. Ranger's Firebrand is another useful tool. It didn't make it into my draft skeleton only because I limit myself to 5 uncommons. For 1 red, you deal 2 damage to any target and the ring tempts you, but it's sorcery speed. As premium red removal, this is usually gone by pick 3, but since you have so many cheap removal options in red, it isn't a must-have. Book of Mazarbul works wonders in Boros. For two and a red, you get an enchantment saga that on chapter one amasses for one, chapter two amasses for two, and then chapter three gives all of your creatures plus one plus zero and menace until end of turn. This allows you to get in for two damage with your rally on turn two, and then on turn five, swing all. Especially nice with Rittermark coming in with haste on turn five as well. Red is a popular archetype, so these are usually gone by pick three or four. Shadowfax, Lord of Horses, and uh, Shower of the Meaning of Haste. For three and a red and a white, you get a five or four four with haste that puts a creature with lesser power from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking. If you watched my gameplay video, you'll hear me saying that Shadowfax is good filler, and I decided to sideboard it. I've since come up on it. Usually, you can get something out of your hand for free. And you have plenty of good options to hit that have good enter the battlefield effects, like Protector of Gondor or Errand Rider of Gondor. And I'm apparently not the only one who is a little hesitant about Shadowfax, since it also goes a little late for an uncommon around pick 4 or 5. Bill the Pony. If you've been to my live stream, then you've, been ex then you've experienced the Bill hype. Every time this card is played, I want... Bill, 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 from Bill Nye the Science Guy to be echoing in your heads. For three and a white, you get a 1-4 legendary pony that creates two food tokens when it enters the battlefield, and you can sacrifice a food to make target creature you control assign combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. It didn't make the draft skeleton because, again, only five on commons, and it's much better in a deck that takes advantage of the ring emblem, like Celestia or Azorius, where you can use this to sneak in underneath your opponent's blockers and then hit them for four. Also, Bill's a pretty popular guy and is picked up around pick three or four. Reprieve also didn't make the cut for the draft skeleton, but is an excellent pick. For one and a white, you return target spell to its owner's hand and draw a card. This can be a huge tempo swing, especially when you hit your opponent's 4 or 5 drop. If the, game, if the game is over the following turn, this is essentially 2 cost removal, draw a card. And it goes at a pretty average rate for an uncommon around pick 4. 
My last uncommon is Grishnak, Brash Instigator. For two and a red, you get a 1-1 one, one that amasses for two and is the Threaten of the set. You gain control of target non-legendary creature with power less than or equal to your army's power until end of turn. Untap it, it gains haste until end of turn. People immediately think of Rakdos and the Steel and Sack combination with this card, but you don't need black to do it in this set. Improvised Club comes to mind. I don't usually like Improvised Club, but if you are stealing your opponent's creature, then it's a worthwhile synergy. Even if you don't have Sacrifice, or even more, even if this doesn't steal anything when you play it, it's still a 3-3 over two bodies for three, and worth including, in my opinion. Sadly, most people agree with me, and it's usually gone by turn three. Now for the rares. It's still a little early, but I can list some early top performers. Horn of Gondor is amazing and the absolute bane of my existence. I have yet to beat someone playing this card on turn three. If you haven't experienced it yet, let me fill you in. You are quickly drowning in one ones. <laughs> they can just chump block your creatures and eventually overrun you. Combo this with a little Book of Mazarbul to give them all plus one, plus zero, and menace, or maybe you just create enough to give your whole team double strike with Theoden. Either way, this card is disgusting and definitely a top performing rare. In my draft skeleton, I chose one rare, and I chose Eowyn, Fearless Knight, a 3-4 haste that also acts as removal and gives all of your legendary creatures protection from a color or colors until end of turn. Yes, please. Funny enough, the times that I've played her, I've yet to hit anything with her exile. My opponent's stat blocks tend to cap off at 3, I suppose. Boromir, Warden of the Tower, also caught my attention. A 3-3 Vigilance for 2 and a white. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. Still haven't seen that come up, but the important part is that you can sacrifice him to give all of your creatures indestructible until end of turn, and the ring tempts you. Being able to send two waves at your opponent knowing that there won't be any casualties should be enough, and a 3-3 stat block for 3 is decent even without the ability. Amir, Marshal of Rohan. Ah, that moment when the uncommon version is better than the rare. <laughs> for 2 double pip red, you get a 4-4 four, four haste that whenever one or more attacking creatures you control die, untap all creatures you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. This ability triggers only once each turn. The problem is you have to have creatures left standing unless you are combining this with Boromir. It's usually just a 4-4 haste, especially since it's other legendaries, so it doesn't even trigger if they kill it on the first attack. Now for the mythics. I'm sure I skipped some rares that deserve the spotlight. I'll do my best to mention them in future episodes. Anduril, Flame of the West, is a legendary equipment for three colorless. For an equip cost of 2, the equipped creature gets plus 3 plus 1, and you create two tapped 1-1 one, one flying spirit tokens, and if the equipped creature is legendary, then they are tapped and attacking. Like Horn of Gondor, this will have your opponent drowning in tokens in no time. Palantir of Ornthonk is also a top performing mythic. Boros may not be its best archetype because you don't really want to take turn 3 off of developing the board, but if the game goes into mid to late, you'll be happy to have it. For 3, you get a legendary ar artifact that at the beginning of your end step, you put an influence counter on it and scry 2. Then you either draw a card or mill X, where X is the number of influence, and that player loses life equal to the total mana value of the cards that were milled. Quite the pickle for your opponent. You either get card advantage, or they might lose a ton of life. Just hope you aren't against Demir and about to uh, deck from Mill. My last mythic worth a mention is Spiteful Banditry. Still a little early to say which archetype I like this best in, but Selective Wraths are always welcome. For X, double pip red, you deal X damage to each creature, and if something of theirs dies, you get a treasure token. That's it for my thoughts on Boros. I haven't decided what archetype I'll be diving into next week, so if you have one that you want to see, then let me know in the comments below. I've got my eyes on Azorius. Also, let me know if the draft skeleton was helpful, or if you think I missed a top performing card. Feedback is more than welcome. As always, thank you for clicking like and subscribe. 
Good luck with your games and future trophies. I'll see you next week.